welcome everybody to Catskill Mountain Foundation's second virtual program in the Piano Performance Museum in Hunter, New York. I'm Pam Weisberg, Director of Performing Arts, and I'm delighted to reconnect today with Edward Swenson, who restored the historic Conrad Graf piano, which we'll be hearing today, and to welcome back the faculty of the Academy of Forte Piano Performance, Maria von Eppenheisen Rose and Yi Heng Yang. Catskill Mountain Foundation and the Forte Piano Academy are creating a series of international Forte Piano virtual salons for 2021, as well as a combination live and virtual Forte Piano Festival for next August. We hope you will join us for all of those events that are coming up in 2021. More details will be announced this fall. The Piano Performance Museum includes the Stephen E. Greenstein collection of more than 20 historic pianos, which cover the music of Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin, Liszt, the Mendelssohns, and the music of famous composer and jazz pianist Sir Roland Hanna, whose Boardman and Gray piano, which was built during the Roaring Twenties in Albany, New York, is on loan to the museum. Thank you to Stephen Greenstein, creator and curator of our museum collection, for introducing us to your longtime friend, Edward Swenson, and his Graf piano a few years back when Edward lectured here in the museum. The Piano Museum is open now on Fridays and Saturdays to the general public from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. by appointment only with tours by David Peskin. Today, we welcome the 1826 Conrad Graf Forte Piano, our newest acquisition to the Piano Performance Museum. Edward Swenson, who restored this almost two centuries old instrument, is with us to talk about his experiences as restoration expert of these fine early pianos. And as an historian knowledgeable about the period of the early Forte pianos, Maria von Eppenheisen Rose and Yi Heng Yang are founders with Audrey Axon of the Academy of Forte Piano Performance and will perform on and talk about the graph in this concert. We invite you to submit questions to Maria Rose and Yi Heng Yang on Facebook and YouTube, which they will answer at the end of the program. Before we start, I want to thank the Jarvis and Constance Doctorow Family Foundation for their ongoing support of the Piano Museum, as well as Greene County Council on the Arts, DBA Create, and Stewart's Shops. I also want to thank our staff, Sarah Taft and Joan Oldno, as well as Jonathan Ment, our sound engineer, and Richard Hester, piano technician and forte piano builder, for creating this virtual event. Thank you all again for being with us today. And now I'm delighted to present Edward Swenson, Maria von Eppenheisen Rose, and Yi Heng Yang in a lecture and recital welcoming the graph to its new home at the Catskill Mountain Foundation Piano Performance Museum. Good evening. It's great to be with you again. The principal purpose of this talk is to demonstrate Konrad Graf's preeminence as a piano maker by presenting correspondence and critical reviews of his forte pianos by some of Europe's most famous composers. Konrad Graf was the most famous forte piano builder in Vienna during the second and third decades of the 19th century. A master of his trade, he was also a successful businessman, a generous colleague, patron of the arts, a collector of contemporary and historical paintings, and one of the most intriguing figures of Biedermeier Vienna. He was born in humble circumstances, the son of a master tanner on the 11th of November, 1782, in Riedlingen, Germany, a small town on the Danube. Graf received only a basic education during six years of schooling. There's no evidence that he had any musical training whatsoever. After the death of his father in 1793, Graf was apprenticed to a local cabinet maker. After completing his apprenticeship, he traveled to Vienna, 
served briefly in the army, and then found work with the piano builder Jakob Schelkle in the Viennese suburb Währing. Schelkle died in 1802 at age 37. Two years later, Graf married his widow Katharina, adopted Schelkle's daughter Carolina, and took over the workshop. By 1810, 10 employees worked in Graf's small factory. His early instruments were unknown until the museum at Usti nad Labem in the Czech Republic discovered his earliest extant instrument. The nameplate confirms that Graf lived at Schelkle's old workshop in Währing. In 1811, Graf moved to Vienna at Wieden number 182. His new address is displayed on Opus 819, originally built for a Medici palace in Italy. Graf wrote Casa Medici on the trap work. In 1814, Graf's widow Katharina died, leaving him with two children. Graf never remarried. During the Congress of Vienna between September 1814 and June of 1815, after the end of the Napoleonic Wars, European heads of state and diplomats flooded the city. Graf's workshop probably hosted many distinguished visitors, including some American Quakers, who bought a piano and sent it to North America. During the Congress, there were public and private concerts, including those at the Salon of the influential Baroness Fanny Arnstein. At one performance, Ignaz Moscheles, age 20, accompanied soprano Antonio Campi in the Queen of the Nights aria from the Magic Flute. At the same soiree, Johann Nepomuk Hummel performed on a magnificent Graf piano. Tsar Alexander I attended the concert. Graf's reputation as Vienna's foremost piano maker was established very quickly. In 1820, the Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung in Leipzig reported a visit to Graf's factory by two royal guests. The local piano builder, Konrad Graf, had the honored recognition of a visit from Her Majesty, the Duchess Maria Luisa of Parma, and His Majesty, Archduke Rudolf, Cardinal Bishop of Olmutz, who not only toured with approval his entire extensive establishment, but also ordered certain of his instruments. This tireless artist manufactures the most excellent pianofortes. They do not find an equal in beauty, consistency, strength, and fullness of tone, and the solidity of their construction ensures their durability. His unceasing endeavor to achieve the highest possible perfection in his instruments and his attempt at quadruple strung unisons have delivered the most beautiful results. The foremost virtuosos make use of his instruments for their public performances. In 1824, Graf was awarded the title as Forte Piano Purveyor to the Viennese court. His final workshop, a former dance hall called the Mondschein House, provided space for 40 workers, many of whom lived on the premises. The Austrian National Encyclopedia mentions Graf first among 90 piano builders who were active in Vienna. In one city alone, 90 piano builders. In 1835, at the Industrial Exhibi Exhibition in Vienna, Graf received a gold medal for a deluxe instrument that featured decorative ormolu, naturals, veneered mother of pearl, and tortoiseshell covered sharps. The tone of the instrument is described as having surprising strength with bright, distinctive sound in the treble that ranked it among the most successful achievements of the piano maker's art. In 1836, Gustav Schilling provided detailed information about Graf in his Universal Lexicon of Music. Favored by fortune with a restless zeal and indefatigable work ethic, he moved quickly from obscurity. His industry, experimentation, and perpetual striving finally raised his art 
to a rare perfection. Semper Altius was his motto. His instruments are not only the most sought after on the continent, but they also cross oceans and even find even sound in other hemispheres. All his instruments enjoy the benefit of a particular strength in construction, durability in tuning, along with a sonorous, rich voice. The article on the forte piano in the same encyclopedia is more critical. The greatest acknowledged masters of the forte piano building are Broadwood in London, Graf in Vienna, Kalkbrenner in Paris, and Schiedmeier in Stuttgart. Graf's instruments are characterized mainly by a beautiful, bright-sounding treble, but are dull in the middle range of tones and not powerful enough in the bass. In 1837, accompanied by Carl Czerny, Graf spent a year traveling across Europe. The trip included a, a return to his hometown of Riedlingen. Graf's return was described by the Riedlingen town historian. On March 7, Konrad Graf from Vienna, a native son, passed through here in a magnificent three-in-hand travel coach on his journey to Paris. Everyone who knew him when he wandered away from here in wretched clothing as a craftsman's apprentice was astonished. He did not forget the poverty of his origin and his needy ancestors. The journey included visits to both Paris and London. We know little about this trip to Paris, but Graf certainly must have visited the famous Parisian piano factories. David Gromit describes the visit to London. Graf and Czerny undertook the trip to Paris and London, where he played four hands together with Her Majesty the Queen with the famous Viennese piano manufacturer, Konrad Graf. Queen Victoria was in the first year of her long reign. Charlotte Moscheles also confirms the London visit. Graf, who came here with Czerny, wanted to hear every instrument, to visit all the pianoforte makers. He finds the touch of this instrument too heavy, the tone of another too muffled and allow only his instruments alone to be brilliant. Paris and London were the major centers for progressive developments in piano building. Complicated new actions, felt-covered hammers, metal frames, and mass production were taking piano building in new directions. Graf's journey may have been motivated by his desire to study the latest trends, but when he returned, Instead of changing his conservative methods, he retired. Wealthy, famous, he died in 1841 at age 58. During his 37-year career, he manufactured over 3,000 instruments. All but three of these instruments are grand pianos. Around 1825, Graf loaned Beethoven a forte piano with quadruple strung unisons. It's far from certain that Graf built this instrument specifically for Beethoven in an attempt to provide more volume for the deaf composer. Graf soon abandoned his experiment with quadruple unisons. In 1812, Graf started to manufacture pianos with four strings per key. However, since the quadruple strung pianos experiences, experienced difficulties in tuning, he managed to achieve the same fullness of tone with triple unisons. A second Graf piano with quadruple stringing, Opus 432, is also associated with Beethoven. It was apparently a gift for the composer's use at the Spa Baden by Vienna during the summer of 1823. Beethoven used the piano while composing his Ninth Symphony, which premiered in April of 1824. Opus 43 has a Turkish pedal, perhaps used to good effect while composing the Turkish March in the finale of his Ninth Symphony. In 1825,
In the 1990s, Opus 4432 was found abandoned in the basement of the same house that Beethoven had rented. It's not unclear. It's not clear, actually, why the instrument was not reclaimed by either Graf or the composer. Beethoven may have thanked Graf for the instrument by presenting him with the score of his piano sonata in E minor, Opus 90, written in 1814. The autograph bears Graf's name on the margin of the first page.
Among major composers associated with Graf's pianos, Franz Schubert is the only one who was a born Viennese. Johann Gottfried Schubert, one of Schubert's relatives, was a piano builder employed at Graf's factory. It's unlikely that, Graf ever, that Schubert ever owned a Graf piano, but he was certainly familiar with them. On March 7, 1821, Schubert's famous song, The Earl König, had its premiere at a benefit concert in Vienna. The baritone soloist was Johann Michael Vogel, very famous bass baritone of the period. At the keyboard was Schubert's friend Anselm Hüttenbrenner, who later, later commented, I played the accompaniment on a new piano by Konrad Graf. Schubert was so shy that he couldn't be persuaded to perform. He stood next to me and turned pages. In 1824, Schubert advised Lana von Hartmann to buy a piano by one of Vienna's best builders, Graf, Leschen, or Pfaff. Beethoven died on the 26th of March, 1827. Schubert, Streicher, and Graf were among the torchbearers at his funeral. It was attended by 10,000 people.
Chopin arrived in Vienna for a series of concerts on the 31st of July, 1829. He visited the piano factories of Konrad Graf and Andreas Stein to select a piano. He wrote to his family in Warsaw on August 8, 1829, Stein immediately offered to send an instrument to the apartment for use in my concert. Graf, who makes even better piano fortes, told me the same thing. Stein is very nice and friendly to me, but I will not play on his forte pianos. I prefer the forte pianos by Konrad Graf. At his debut concert on August 11, 1829, Chopin performed his variations on Mozart's La Ci Darem La Mano and his concert Rando Krakowiak. Chopin wrote to his family again on the 12th of September. Three piano manufacturers offered to send their forte pianos to my room. I declined because the room is too small. At the concert, I sat down to a magnificent instrument by Graf, perhaps the finest in Vienna. In the summer of 1830, Mendelssohn spent a month in Vienna, where he met the most important piano builders, including Graf, Leschen, and Johann Baptist Schweicher. Beethoven's friend, Julius, sorry, Mendelssohn's friend, Julius Schubring, had asked him to buy a new piano for his home in Dessau. Mendelssohn wrote Schubring on the September 15th. For 14 days, I went back and forth between Streicher, Leschen, and Graf without deciding. Eventually, I found a Graf piano that in sound and playability immensely appeals to me that responds to the softest pianissimo, as well as when I attack with full strength. It's also extremely attractive, so I wrote my name in it that it is for you. You will be pleased. It seems to me to be the best instrument I have played since England. Moreover, Graf is generally regarded here to be the best and considered by all musicians as the first. The same is true in Leipzig and Berlin. On July 30, 1832, Mendelssohn wrote to his friend Alois Fuchs in Vienna, I want to have a Graf piano sent to me here, and although I know Graf personally and think he would send me a good instrument, I would like that someone I can completely trust should approve it. Mendelssohn purchased the instrument for his sister Rebecca. The instrument is discussed again in Mendelssohn's letters to Ignaz Moscheles, on the 26th of September, 1832. My younger sister will get a new instrument from Vienna, from, from Graf, about which miracles are promised from Vienna. Mendelssohn dedicated the instrument at a concert in Berlin. He wrote to Fuchs on the 16th of November, the instrument you selected for me is superb. It has created the greatest pleasure in the auditorium. Yesterday, it projected magnificently through the orchestra, very clear, distinct, melodious, and found general approbation. Please thank Graf very much on my behalf and tell him how happily I play upon his instruments. On September 6, 1833, Mendelssohn asked Fuchs to, set, to select yet another Graf piano for his cousin, cousin Benjamin and his wife, Rosamunde.
On May 3, 1834, Thalberg played his fantasy on motifs from Norma at a benefit concert for the blind in Vienna. He played on a piano that Graf had donated for the event. Thalberg received a rave review, but there was also detailed praise for Graf's piano. Glory to the artist, but also honor the instrument which leads him to victory. Thalberg played on a forte piano from the workshop of Hof Instrumentenmacher Konrad Graf. The widespread reputation of the instruments of this master is well founded. Graf has already reached the admiral goal that one can sing on his instruments so that they move the heart the same way as the cello and the violin. Graf is respected both as an artist and as a citizen. The excellent performance of his pianos has carried his reputation to every country, even across the ocean to North America. Nonetheless, he's not able to fulfill his numerous commissions in a timely manner, because he never delegates the important hammer leathering to other hands than his own. The leather hammers by Konrad Graf undoubtedly had an influence on his training under his father, who was a master tanner. Graf is frequently, lettered, frequently mentioned in the letters and diaries of Clara Wieck and Robert Schumann. In 1832, Clara Wieck performed three concerts in Leipzig that rave reviews. The Allgemeiner Musikalische Gazette reported the young, not yet 13-year-old pianist Clara Wieck gave three concerts to an overflowing house with rare applause. She played on an incomparably beautiful grand piano by Konrad Graf. Graf presented this forte piano as a gift to Clara Wieck in 1835, about two years before her marriage to Robert Schumann. She must have impressed Graf when she visited his workshop in Vienna. There's no evidence however, that the piano was originally intended as a wedding present, which is often stated. Robert Schumann commented in a letter in September 1839, Clara received an answer yesterday from Graf. He expressly acknowledged that the grand piano is a souvenir of his admiration. In 1838, she presented a series of successful concerts in Vienna, again using a Graf piano. Graf, Clara included her own souvenir de Vienne, Opus 9, a fantasy on Haydn's famous Gott der Halte, Franz den Kaiser. This unfortunate tune by Franz Josef Haydn ended up in being a rally cry for during Nazi Germany. On March 15, 1838, Clara was awarded the title of Imperial and Royal Chamber Virtuosa from the Austrian Emperor. In April, she played the same concert at Graz using a piano from using a piano that Graf had especially sent from Vienna. And after the concert, the Graf piano was sold to a member of the audience. Clara Schumann wrote in her diary on 13 August 1838. Today I received my beautiful grand piano from Graf. It is beautiful inside and out. Two weeks later, she commented, visit of Mendelssohn with life, he likes my new Graf. During his visit to Vienna in the fall of 1838, Robert Schumann also benefited from Graf's generosity. Shortly after his arrival, Schumann received a grand piano from Graf as a free loan. In his letters and diary entries, Schumann described several friendly encounters with Graf. Robert Schumann married Clara Wieck without her father's consent on September 12, 1840. A battle ensued between the Schumanns and Clara's father, Friedrich, who refused to release Clara's Graf piano and other possessions. Graf himself was drawn into the fray. On the 10th of February, 1841, Clara wrote in her diary, 
From Graf, I received another letter that extols father to cease his intrigues because of the piano. It is so exasperating. A few days later, her piano finally arrived at the Schumann apartment in Leipzig.
During his concerts in Vienna from 1838 to 1840, Liszt performed frequently on Graf pianos. On the 12th of April, 1838, he played at Graf's show showroom in the presence of Clara Wieck. Clara Wieck commented, he performed two fantasies with colossal power, especially the second in G minor. He shook our innermost souls. At his first public concert, a benefit for the flood victims of Pest, Liszt played a concerto by Weber on the Arar piano that Thalberg brought him from Paris. The concert was reviewed. The splendid full tone of the instrument safeguarded and enhanced the effect considerably. The bravura waltzes and the great etude seemed to bring together every device that could be conceived of as difficult for the instrument. Liszt played his three compositions, Reminiscence of the Puritani, Valse de Bravoure, and the Grand Etude in G minor on Graf's instruments. The pianos acquitted themselves very creditably against the Parisian art in tone and tuning. Liszt gave eight concerts during April and May of 1838. The reviews mentioned that two Graf pianos were available in case of broken strings. Liszt played on the same two Graf instruments we've already heard. Their beauty and clarity of tone are praiseworthy. This time the strings held and so did the tuning. With his fiery, full voice performance, Liszt produced an impression on, an, on his audience that was more powerful than any I've ever experienced. The piano was a Graf. The instrument distinguished itself excellently with its full, beautiful, emphatic, and equal tone. The instrument withstood the trial by fire of a Liszt concert. In 1840, Griff Graf commissioned the painting Liszt at the Grand Piano from Josef Danhauser. The piano looks identical to Opus 2787 at the Kunsthistorisches Museum in, in, Munich, in, in Vienna. The artist signed his work in commission from Konrad Graf in remembrance of Liszt, Josef Danhauser, 1840. The painting depicts famous people from Liszt's circle of friends, including the standing figures Victor Hugo, Niccolo Paganini, and Gioacchino Rossini. The seated figures, Alexander Dumas Père, Georges Sand, Franz Liszt, and the Countess Marie d'Agoul. All of these not notable figures lived in Paris in 1837, possibly during the time of Graf's visit to the city. The trio of musicians, Liszt, Rossini, and Paganini, seem transfixed by the bust of Beethoven, which hovers outside the window framed by the setting sun. Next to Liszt, seated on the floor, is Liszt's paramour, Countess Marie Catherine d'Agoul. A contemporary biography reported that she knelt in rapture at the piano whenever the ma master played. The other writers in the group, Alexander Dumas Père, Victor Hugo, and Georges Sand, form a triangle of literati. Saul is dressed in drag and smoking a cigar. There's another famous portrait, portrait by Josef Krihuber, which shows Franz Liszt performing at the Graf piano. Graf probably commissioned the Graf, depicted are the artist Josef Krihuber on the left, Hector Berlioz, Karl Czerny, and the violinist Heinrich Wilhelm Ernst. The titles of the music list performed are clearly legible. Beethoven's Sonata in A-flat major, opus 110, and Liszt's Hungarian Melodies. Graf died in Vienna on the 27th of March, 1851, at the age of 69. He was interned at the Metzleinsdorfer Cemetery it no longer exists, but a few graves of honor are preserved at Waldmuller Park. 
Regarding Graf's family, his stepdaughter, Carolina Schelkle, married a locksmith named Traumerer. There's no re record of any surviving children. His daughter, Juliana, married a businessman named Josef Schober. They had one daughter, Carolina Juliana Schober, who married Dr. Johann Zuchenek. Graf's granddaughter inherited the bulk of his estate, including the apartment house behind St. Stephen's Cathedral. The building covers an entire block in Vienna's first district. Graf's granddaughter must have died circa 1858 because her husband became the sole owner in that year. In 1944, Victor Zuchenek, Graf's great-great-great-grandson, inherited the house. He still lives there, renting his apartments in the, in the mansion that Graf built.
Pam. Hi, E. Hang. That was fun. Oh, it was great fun. <laughs> it was wonderful. <laughs> Very exciting. Now, are we, um, we haven't started yet, have we? Um, and for Maria? I don't see Maria here. Do you have questions? I I have I do have a question here. Oh, nice. Um, there oh, you are. Hi, Maria. <laughs> Hi. Thank Maria. you. Uh, thank you so much for such a beautiful, beautiful concert. Absolutely yeah. lovely. Really lovely. And there were some lovely comments from people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I was looking on YouTube. So oh, wow. um, anyway, I just wanted to thank you both for such a beautiful concert and. Thank Professor Swenson for a wonderful lecture. Yes. Um, it is a thrill for us to actually hear the graph and be introduced to this gorgeous piano. Um, so we're gonna have a short Q&A. Uh, I see a question here. Uh, Joan asks, how is it different playing the graph for a piano as opposed to a modern piano in regards to the music played in tonight's performance. So either or both of you. Um, I can start out, um, Maria, you can add on after. But uh, yeah, it's a world world of difference really between playing this repertoire on the Graf, a, a premier instrument um, that as we heard was intimately known by all these great composers. Um, and immediately when you sit down, there's such a responsiveness and a closeness of connection that the pianist gets with the sound of the instrument. And you're invited into this world from almost 200 years ago where there's so much color and speaking. It's like the music just speaks very clearly and naturally. And um, yeah, the connection is very, clear and quick and close for the performer and also for the audience, I think mm -hmm. as well. Um, the touch is a lot lighter um, and uh, yeah, there's so many aspects of it that, that are just so more suited to this music. Maria? Maria? Yes. Um, I, I would, I would almost say the opposite at the same time because I was just thinking how they would have res the the people in the at the at the time of the of the music would have responded to the piano. Uh, and some of us play. Some of us play on on earlier instruments, and it is a very different experience coming from an 18th century piano and to the grave, which is more like the way the contemporaries would have experienced it, which is a very sonorous and beautiful instrument. I'm sorry, I I hear an echo all the time, um, so I I need to turn off. Um, I uh, see another um, question here um, from Anonymous. Have we lost anything in the development of the modern piano, which is generally played in large venues? Um, well, I'll begin by answering. It looks like Maria is trying to fix her audio issue. Um, yeah, uh, there's a lot that has been lost in the progress that was made in the modern piano. The modern piano is really made for a huge concert hall of thousands of people. And um, the detail and intimacy that we hear in a graph piano or an earlier piano from the time of Mozart, uh, that was meant to be heard in smaller drawing rooms or palace chambers where you wouldn't have had, you know, more than a hundred people at a time so there was a real closeness with the audience. So the instrument doesn't have to be that loud. And rather than that being a weakness of a graph or an early piano, that's really an asset when it comes to hearing this music in a new kind of detail. Yeah. 
Hi, Maria. Hi, I'm back and it's it's normal now. I think I was having two, two windows open at the same time. Anyway, um, I, I, I really wanted to come back with what I was trying to say before, even, even though I know that the question is about what we lost. Um, it is such an interesting experience to play this instrument when you um, think about, you know, you, you read some commentaries from contemporaries who say, oh, I played on this beautiful graph piano and it's it's got so much sound and it's so big sounding. And then you, for the, if you come from the modern piano and you, for the first time, play on this piano, you are almost wondering what they were talking about because it sounds so intimate and so, um, so much more... Uh, uh, controlled in sound than what we're used to on the big Steinway. So it's 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 kind of a double vision that you get when you play on, on this instrument. You feel at the same time, oh my gosh, this, this instrument has so much to offer that the earlier pianos did not. And also it has so much to offer that the modern piano does not. So you, you're kind of in this vortex of two, two different periods. And I, I find it incredibly fascinating to explore what this instrument does which which has i i find that the registers of the piano each have their own character that you really have to get to know and they and they don't really overshadow each other um in in the way that a modern piano has a way that where one register tends to dominate the other ones here that does not happen even though the, the basses are are quite loud it never really overpowers the the incredible um, singing quality of the top register. Um, so have we lost um, something of the, in, in the modern piano? I, I think what we have lost in the modern piano is that we're used to a certain type of sound and that we forget to explore the, the character of every individual instrument. Um, and that is, um, I find very exciting about this piano. Oh, Pam, I don't think I'm sorry. Uh, can you, I see another question. Uh, can you tell us about the pedaling on the graph? Well, the, the graph here, yeah, it has four pedals and um, there's a moderator pedal, which is very beautiful. I used it a little bit. I think Maria did too, where a piece of felt gets put between the hammer and the string a little piece of felt, and that gives it a beautiful muted sound, a very refined and ethereal timbre. Um, and then there's another una corda or soft pedal, which is more similar to the soft pedal in the modern piano. And there's a, a damper lifting pedal. Um, so yeah, the, there's more possibility for sure. There are more pedals on this graph. And, and um, this was a real time of experimentation when this piano was made in the early 19th century, um, uh, piano makers were really uh, exploring different numbers of pedals. So there are other graphs with which I think have even more pedals than this and have five pedals. And there are interesting pedals and other graphs where a little cymbal and percussion um, drum is played within inside the, the box of the piano just for special effect. So they were, looking at registration in effect as much as, as anything. Yeah, this, this piano has a, a, one of the pedals is, is um, for the bassoons, which I think is not, uh, we did not use that. Yeah. It's not, not working, but, but the, um, but the other three are, and um, the, the, the professional pianists of the period, we're not um, not they, they don't talk a whole lot about oh you know you 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 really need to use the, the all the special effects. It was a little bit of a remnant of 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 some of the earlier instruments where where the only way to to really create variation in the sound was to use different stops and paddles just like you would do on a on a harpsichord. So it was, it was but in there are so many 
so many moments in Beethoven's music where, where it does indicate um, uh, una corda, due corda. Uh, well, that's that's on the on the French piano, but the um, um, where it is, uh, sordi, con sordino, where you really feel like the uh, uh, the moderator is called for. And there's a difference between the moderator and the and the una corda. It's a, it's a different way of of softening the sound and different character. Well, I think that um, we have um, come to the end of the questions um, that we have here, but I want to thank you again so much for such a lovely concert. Thank you, uh, Maria, and thank you, Ehang. And uh, and the lecture was um, was fascinating. Um, thank you, Professor um, Swenson, and uh, thank everybody for uh, attending the the uh, program tonight. Um, we look forward to connecting with you uh, as we continue creating these special programs uh, for the Piano Performance Museum. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Thank you. Thank you very much.